Jim. Well, hello everyone, and we are back with our latest interview with the British Club Awards creators, and we are joined with Steve Becker, the creative genius behind Brazzy Jazzy. Hello, sir. Wow, genius is a title you don't throw around every day or at least every hour. We don't so. muck about, we go straight for the compliments here, that's it. Is that the British version of genius as like that was pretty cool or is like this dude's a genius like Einstein level? So. I, I'm going to take it. I think you're onto something and I think yes. <laughs> and I'm going to quote you on all this so don't you worry. Keep it. Uh, How you are go. you? How are you doing? Right? So obviously, um, obviously I'm in um, rainy old England and you are in New York, I believe, aren't you, Steve? Correct. Banned from going anywhere else because we're one of the few uh, COVID free places right now. Oh, really? Right, right. Okay. We removed from complete lockdown on May 19th, so uh, two weeks from today. Oh, blimey. Yeah, well, I don't think I'll ever go anywhere without a mask again, but uh, yeah, it was yeah. weird. It was weird. Sorry, a little tangent here. I had lunch with a director friend of mine this week. And you're like, let's go to a restaurant. I'm like, a restaurant? What are you, crazy? We can't go to a restaurant. He goes, yeah, we've all been vaccinated. You and me, we can sit. I'm like, uh, I... and it's like taking off my uh, mask for the first time, sitting in an outdoor restaurant. It's like it was like getting naked before a woman for the first time. I'm like, oh, wait, can I do this? Is this right? Uh... Well, I, I, I've got my mask. If you, if we can feel safer, <laughs> we could put them on here. It's... Uh... I trust you from a distance, Chris. I, I know you're a pretty good guy, but you know, being in the same room with you is you know, not, not quite at that level yet. Now you really have to say, is it worth you know being in the same room with this person? You know, they're boring. You're worried now if they're boring, diseased, or you know, just will steal from you. So there's many some, things you have to worry about now. Some things never change. <laughs> You, you look relatively disease free from here. Well, yeah, yeah. Bloody HD, that's, that'll let me down. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So just, just a bit on to yourself there, Steve. So um, your background, was it you, you started in comedy? Was it stand-up you started in, was it? Yeah, I, I started in film. I always did comedy as just for the fun of it. And I've revisited it lately because I wanted, it helps me with writing because I'm talking to writers out there. You get so into, well, I gotta make sure the character arc is this, and you know, the first episode covers this in the first season, and plant my B story, my C story, and then you start yeah, yeah. losing some of the comedy of just go up there, get booed, things thrown at you, something's funny, and you work on material. And that's what I used to do, obviously not during pandemic. Um but I was never a comedian that was trying to get on one of the late night shows. So I never did the same routine twice. It was always like, I'll talk about these three things in my head. But if I had to repeat performance, I couldn't do it. So uh, you, just, I, you just did it as it came into your head that evening or whatever was on your mind that day or? Yeah, it would be like today, if I was to do a comedy routine, I was like, oh, I'll tell you, I was some of this crazy British guy and it would just, you know, there and then lean <laughs> into the second point. You know, why are the British considered funnier than Americans? You know, just because they talk funnier? Is it, uh, you know, the dry humor? You know, you go on to things yeah, like yeah. that. So, yeah. But I love uh, British comedy. I, I just finished rewatching all nine seasons of uh, Peep Show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong with that. And it's very few shows that make you laugh out loud. And just the throwaway lines that they have are I just yeah fantastic i'm extremely fond of that myself yeah peep show that's uh, mark and jez yeah. yeah uh yeah i don't know how they come up with that but it just gets better and better doesn't it so. and they never have any redeeming moments it's really kind of a fascinating is that they never like things sort of work out but they always never well it's you know they're still <laughs> live at the end of the the season or the episode and that's about it you know like, all right well i guess that didn't work out and so when when it came to kind of um, doing the stand up and you're talking about what inspires you, what was kind of the move towards uh, making your own stuff? Was it a natural thing like from stand up? I want to get into. Did you ever think about doing acting, Steve? Or I, I've performed, and that's what I'll say because I've never. <laughs> when I was in film school, I was probably in like fifty productions that will never see the light of day because you know you act in each other's projects. 
And they all say, well, I was like, what's my part? Just, just be you, you know? You know? Half of them were silent. So just, just make that <laughs> stupid expression you do all the time, like, huh? Or, but I, if I, again, if I had to repeat performance and that's why I admire actors, I'm like, I can't do that, you know? Oh, okay. So uh, I said, wow, that was great. And that's why I actually, when I was casting, I had to learn to not keep taking improv people take some people that also had some classical experience because they, you know, they do a Robin Williams riff and you're like, that's great. Let's keep this part, this part, and this part. They're like, I don't know what I say. I don't even remember what I said. And I'm like, I actually <laughs> agree with you. I'm the same way, but I thought you were an actor. So yeah, but I started out in independent film, uh, which is a very tough industry now. I mean, 20 what? some odd years ago. What did you start in? What was your job role when you first started doing that? Um, God, I worked on a lot of independent films when I, my first job out of college was CBS television and sports. So I worked a lot of on-site games and in finance during the day, as I say, and nights and weekends in the studio to learn how it was done. But I'm a weird guy. I have an MBA, I have a business background. And my day job to this day is real estate development, I guess. I raped and pillaged the land. I, uh, you know, so day job, I like it, you know, it's completely soulless, but I know that one plus one equal two when I'm doing real estate development, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's sort of the same thing as film and television producing. And that's why I do a lot of producing because it's unions instead of the writer, you have the architect instead of one union, you have the other, you have your DP, you have your, you know, it's all the same arguments. It's just um, controlled chaos. But as I was saying with real estate, one plus one equal two. In film and television, one plus one equal Thursday. There's zero correlation of, if you do this well and you do this well, this will happen. If there's- No. No. A thousand percent, yeah, you're right, yeah, a hundred percent, yeah, yeah. Well, because if that theory, if it was a formula, you would be able to say Hollywood has access to every great director, actor, writer, endless amounts of money, whatever locations they want, and they still put out 90% crap. Sorry yeah. if you're watching Hollywood. Yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not my opinion. I'm just... Yeah, like, like you say, you put the ingredients together, it doesn't necessarily make it so. Yeah, it's a really interesting way of putting it. It's like, say, if you're well, building a wall, you know how many bricks you need, you know the cement, and you can plan it, and you know it's going to happen. But with a film, even even the best kind of effort you might make a film and it may turn out to be shit for whatever reason, you know what I mean? It's uh, the best funky. example I can use is a fellow Brit of yours, uh, Gordon Ramsay. I love him. <laughs> uh, I have his cookbook. I follow his cookbook. My food doesn't come out tasting like Gordon Ramsay's at the end because there is, he knows when to add the salt and like, oh, this is too salty or I need this. You know, oh, what are you doing? That's not how you flambe uh, this. It's, you just need to swear more. That's that's what, and then it works. And that's that's yeah. uh, bloody bleep, hell. Yeah, <laughs> bleep yourself cooking, and it'll work. It'll be fine. Yeah. Well, it's, but he has. It's also choosing the right ingredients. It's doing things at the right time. Yeah. It's being able to taste it and know that something's wrong, which I don't. I'm like, I don't know. Is it supposed to taste like this midway through? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's. But that's what real. That's what filmmaking and television is. It's a form. It's a recipe that you can follow, it doesn't mean it's going to come out good at the end. It's not a formula, unfortunately. So based on the fact that then you, you, you very, very rightly, you know, kind of diagnosed what it is, and it's problematic, and it's scary, and there's no guarantees, you could put 20 grand into something, you may only get a grand back, you know, I mean, there's no guarantees for anything. So with all those kind of worries and that, why is it that not only we do it, why do you do it? Well, even my wife agrees, you know, she's like, she, she always asks, how can you do your job? It's so boring, the day job that is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you gotta, it's a dream. I didn't want to go into filmmaking. I was always a writer, a comedy writer and things like that we did for fun, but I didn't want to, as I thought, sell out, which it probably turns out I did, you know, trying to make a career out of film and television. It's really hard because very, very rarely do you get to do what you want. If you, 
especially for TV writers. Everyone wants to be a TV writer. TV is the golden age now, but you have to start in the writer's room and it's a very hierarchical there, unless you wrote the show, the, yeah. you know, created the show. You're starting out as a writer's assistant, then you move up to you know, coordinator, then maybe a full-edge writer, maybe then you write one episode. It's the long process. Yeah. And independent film was always DIY, do it yourself. Correct. My buddy, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Dan Mervish, who has a new movie coming out. He's one of the creators of Slam Dance, and he was, his thing was always DIY until you die. You know, you <laughs> may, maybe one of them will be well, but at least you'll look back in your life and you have a, a portfolio, uh, something to leave. I, I did this, this, and this point to it, you know, like, yeah. Brad, you guys, it's done. I didn't talk about doing it. I did it. It may not have been the greatest thing in the world, but it's mine. Yeah, yeah. I, I love what you just said. There. You know, I, you know, you're not talking about doing it. You did it. You got it done. And uh, that's yeah, that's the beauty with, uh, say, guerrilla filmmaking, DIY filmmaking, DIY. Well, isn't DIY. that we're, I love we're that. in the visual <laughs> business, right? I mean, why am I talking about what my screenplay is going to be or do? You know, that's part of the job. Fine. Or you could just watch my show. Here it is. You we know, did it. Yeah, we did it. We made it. Like yeah. it, you don't like it. I don't give it. Yeah, I prefer you do like it and give me money. But if you don't, uh, it's nice knowing you. I mean, you didn't do me anything. So I think that's very much kind of say similar to why I kept on making the films and the web series and stuff because uh, at one point I I thought to myself. Um, this is probably one of the most interesting parts of my life is not the day job. It's not that it's my passion, which is uh, kind of the acting and the writing and the filmmaking. And I love that. And that seems to be something that flares up in you as well. And you think, yeah, you know, it doesn't make sense. You just love kind of doing it, I guess. And that's like you say, at the end of the day, you have built up a portfolio of work. You know, it wasn't just the day job. It was, I had this, you know what I mean? I'm saying maybe yeah. one day something will happen. If it doesn't, you've got it and you did it. That's brilliant. Yeah, there's a little, <laughs> it wasn't a direct line, as we all know. Uh, I've been doing this for 20 years. I worked in a lot of films. Because of my background, I worked as a lot as a producer because I understood the creative side. I understood the, uh, sorry, I'm going my phone away. My wife's just texting me. Um, wants to know how it's going. Yeah, no, she doesn't care. <laughs> uh, she wants me to help her, you know, collect money from a client. Uh, she's um, not stuck outside of the shopping or something. Uh, she has her own business. By the way, that's who Brazzy Jazz is based on, but I can get oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I always worked as a producer because I wasn't one of those, I like to be an on-set producer. I hated dealing with the talent, you know, managers or anything like that, you know. I always dealt with a partner who did that. I was, I want to be in the grime on set, what would be considered a UPM, you know, production manager or the line producer or just the actual producer on set. Because I could talk to the director and balance things out. Like, look, dude, I understand what you want to do here. Like, we can do it, it's your choice, but we're gonna have to lose this today if you can't. It's it's that simple. It's it's a mathematical equation. And or if we want to tweak this and then the rest of the day is just crisis management you know yeah 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 the, yeah. the truck broke down uh someone fell down the stairs you know props didn't show up I, i'm talking props like the prop person we're not talking you know big production here the person who was prop slash hair and makeup slash uh getting the food uh is somehow lost in new york at least we could do that they all it's all by subway i don't have to be sending people around in cars so and I loved, and I loved it because I was very connected to that project and wanted to do the best project possible, but I didn't have an emotional connection since I didn't write it. And I could do the best on a completely analytical, best job I can possibly do without worrying that, you know, my life's work wasn't going to be seen by all the people in the correct way. And the projects I work on, people keep coming back to me because I get them made for them. And that's in the best way possible. Doesn't mean it's going to be a success, but they never thought about, wow, I, you know, you you stopped me from making my dream come true. It was like, wow, thank you, 
I'm just not patting myself on the back because there's like hundreds of people who do this. You got to be able to see, you know, it's easy when you're on set to get lost in the minutia of it. Yeah, yeah. But if you're a filmmaker or a writer, you learn that the film is made in editing. As long as you have enough footage and you get, you've got all the coverage and you can cover for that bad actor today or this. And like, yeah. look, I'm always reminded, get a cutaways. I don't care. Show, shoot the wall, you know, shoot someone picking their nose. Just have something we can cut away to. And yeah, I love it. Once I'm done, and sorry for anyone who's watching this that works with me as actors, I like the five, six days of shooting now because after that, I'm usually, you know, had enough and I can move on. Yeah, yeah. It's just, just me and the editor after that. I just, I, I'm agreeing with so much and everything you're saying there. And like you say, the film is basically in the edit. And like you say, if you just get enough shit done on the day, you can, and especially if there's some bad acting as well, the editing can save your life. You know what I mean? It can do wonders. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna assume from your slightly gray hair that you've been through this once or twice before and you really? realize that oh, yeah. that shot you really wanted to get, this was gonna be the key shot of the film or whatever, or the or the web series, it ends up being cut and you're like, wow, that was just a monument, a waste of time and money. If I had I just a... seen it from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I still do that. You oh, need the someone beautiful. there to tell you, slap you. Hey, hey, you don't need that shot. I was a beautiful brunette, and then, and then that's what happened, and then <laughs> off it went. That was it. Sunk oh, in. Still got. Look, come on. Uh, we're those of us who are follically challenged only uh, worship you at this point. <laughs> Gray will do. So let's. Uh, so absolutely um, spot on with that. And I agree with so much there. So. Let's talk about it. Where did the Brazzy Jazzy come from then? So I think you just dropped a hint before, but uh, yeah. Where yeah, did well, the... you know, I got to pay attention. I, I like to seed things for the, for the third act. I'm making my notes too, you see. <laughs> my I lived in Brazil for six, well, I was going there off and on for 20 years. My mother is a professor of Brazilian studies. So they lived there. Um, I lived there off and on for eight years. My wife is Brazilian. Um, we've been living here now in New York for five years. And this story was based on her. And, uh, you know, I say her, but honestly, it's more craziness as you watch from other friends, so many Brazilians we know that have come to New York with less of a plan and ended up in the dark underbelly of things that happen in New York. All right. <laughs> and I try to do it in a very easy way. I'm not, you know, no one's, uh, there's no prostitution or pole dancing going on here. It's just gigs as, you know, you I don't know if Craigslist is big in uh, in England, but here, foot fetish model, you know, a foot model, yeah. the hand on, you know, and doing these things with not understanding what it really is, which is uh, the second season, which we're about to release. It's just oh. really the first episode is about a foot modeling job going real wrong. And Didn't you touch on that in the first season? Wasn't there an episode? That was, uh, it was, I think you got the whole 13 episodes. The first season was six and then the second season was seven. Oh, and okay. we just released all of them. Yes, that was episode seven, which is considered the second season. Oh, okay. But, um, so it's based on my wife, adapting to New York and just the customs are so different. I didn't want to make it, well, in Brazil, we do this. And here in New York, we do that. And give her motivation and that she was coming here to be a fashion designer. And as I said, all hell breaks loose. Um, but she's, was well, this was right when Trump came in, right after we started, she came up with the idea was before, but we started shooting later and, uh, you know, whole immigration thing. And, what we had to go through for ourselves, even though we were married, we, uh, you know, we didn't get married in the Central Park with a, with a uh, hemp priest or something. It was a big wedding and it should have been like a rubber stamping and, you know, we had the 200 people at our wedding and this and that, but Trump delayed things. So for 18 months, her green card was delayed. Oh, God. So uh, she had to, it was just, the mood changed, so I made the comedy darker, which is more my style. 
But it's interesting, and anyone who, who is watching this uh, from LA, I got, it was, just, it was pitched to a lot of people and I had a teaser reel. And they all thought, wow, it's funny, it's cool, it's this. And they said two things, well, three actually. One, there's no market for Brazilians in the United States because there, there's no shows about Brazilians. I go, yeah, exactly. There's no show. There could possibly be one. There's a market. They don't think that way. <laughs> they need to say something that's validated. Oh, the second was, can't we make her Mexican? I'm like, yeah, you could. Uh, there's a whole couple networks, uh, Televisa and uh, Univision, that pretty much do that. And make, I don't. Make, or make a British. Yeah. British, well, British jazzy. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, nothing, you know, nothing Brazilian. The same type of show, except she's Mexican. Like, well, all right. And then the third one, which bothers me the most, was like, and I'll use, I'm going to combine certain names that were used for me. And this is said to my face. So it wasn't like in an email or, uh, you know, like I'm in a meeting. I'm like, you know, it's good. We looked at all the materials. Very interesting. I, 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 yeah, I just got to ask a question. Why is a bald, middle-aged, chubby, Jewish guy writing a show about a Brazilian girl coming to New York. I'm like, chubby? Really? We had to throw that one in there? You know, bald? And there you go. So I go, I explain, well, my wife's Brazilian. My mother is a professor of Brazilian studies. I've been going to Brazil since I was eight years old. I speak fluent Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, uh, have worked on films in Brazil. I have hundreds of Brazilian friends. This, and they go, yeah, I guess you, you have the credentials to write it, but still it's a little weird. You got to admit that. He I'm sounds like a complete asshole, isn't it? Really? Well, I think, like, yeah, it's true. I, I take it didn't come to your Christmas dinner. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, exactly. I mean, I didn't have the ability like Aaron Sorkin to work in the West Wing for four yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, how could you have possibly have written that show? Of course he didn't work in the West Wing. <laughs> of course he wasn't, uh, you know, in the Marines and write a uh, few good men. Come on. You yeah. get an idea, you do the research. And mine was even research. I'm just looking at the other side of my bed. But, my wife complained, you Americans, my God. But I, I don't see, just it seems nasty enough to justify a good idea, isn't it? You know? I mean, it's like... <laughs> But that's well, that's that's what you're dealing with, isn't it? That's nuts. Well, I obviously that person uh, I did run into them again recently. Um, they go congratulate me on the success of the show. I'm like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> nice, isn't it? That's nice. Yeah, yeah. I've read in other panels where they it's like, wow, you've written three really kick-ass, powerful women. How did you do that? Like, what do you mean? How did I do that? Uh, it's I, I, yeah, I can't write. I can't I'm write a writer. A dynamic I'm a writer. woman. I uh, and yeah. I keep thinking, sorry, this is more of the bad joke, like the uh, Jack Nicholson it's, uh, quote, and when it, as good as it gets, when they goes, how do you write women so deeply and passionately? Goes well, <laughs> I take away logic and, and accountability, and I write that. I, I think of a man and take away reason and accountability. You see, that's why I'm not a stand-up comedian. I can't even remember my own stuff. It's a 20-year-old <laughs> film I just saw on Netflix not long ago. That's the only reason I got it. Yeah, but I, I was like, it was going to come out of my mouth. And I was like, this is this is being recorded, right? So I don't probably don't want to say this to the I'll uh, dub you. Of I'll dub you afterwards. <laughs> yeah, but that's the kind of... It really is absurd. And I'm not saying it, writers from should all be white, middle-aged men. It should be a rainbow coalition of people. But people, yeah, I people. can't be the one only writing the white middle-aged bald guy's role. There's so yeah, that's Larry David's the only one who can do that. I'm a, yeah. I can't meet with him, then I would never have a job. Yeah. Um, so when you so you put your script together and it was this was this meetings to raise funding for it, Steve? Was it uh, for the show? Did you know you wanted to make it into a web series? Was that what it was going for? Or? No, I didn't know I wanted to make it into a web series. I, uh, I had a lot of meetings in Brazil. Uh, oh, really? Brazil, really? And it was well received. And someone gave me like, wow, we'd really like to do this. But I don't know what's going on. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I have the resources. Yeah, yeah. So I shot basically three 22-minute episodes. Wow. 
and show it to them. And this one, uh, anyone who reads the newspaper, besides COVID, Brazil went into an economic downturn of biblical proportions. So most of the networks in Brazil are owned by studios. So it's like Fox Brazil, Universal Brazil, uh, Sony Brazil. And they would just bring their content down there and subtitle it and make a fortune. But then Brazil passed a, a law that, 20, I'm gonna use the air quotes on this one, 20% of all uh, shows that are on prime time on cable, which is these shows, basically not their networks, the cable network had to be Brazilian production, again, giving the air yeah. quotes. But the problem is no one watches shows that they were making in Brazil and had zero value outside of the country. And so they were like just buying nature documentaries and stuff that were shot in Brazil because people like, they were showing me numbers that 4,000 people watched this show that they produced. Like four, yeah, they go, we didn't know numbers even went this low. So when they said, well, you're shooting in New York, are you crazy? And I gave them a budget number that was like insanely low. We're not talking union. It was SAG and everything else, but definitely in the mid five digits, it was like less than $50,000 an episode to shoot. <laughs> like, what are you crazy? Like, you know what that is? Like, right? <laughs> It's like, that's a full show. It's a full 30 minutes. You know, well, we would never make that back in advertising. So at that point, I'm like, fine. I chopped it around again after it was shot. They're like, yeah, well, we can't. We don't have any money. And they weren't going to dip into their money to pay you know, for a show that they thought would only work in Brazil and in, in the United States. But now, I sh so I already had the footage. It was shot, and I just chopped it up. You know, I had brought in a couple of good editors. And I've fallen in love with the concept of web series now in, the, in terms of editing. Because 22 minutes is a long time to maintain a high level energy for comedy. And if you watch yeah. my show, and this isn't me patting myself in the back by any means, I think the show stands out because I, I call it caffeine speed comedy. It's moving at this pace, which you can do in a web series because you're cutting fast and you yeah, can yeah. throw little things up there and you only have to keep their attention span four to six minutes. And, you know, as compared to a lot of the office type comedies out there, which are slow and it's you know, a lot of looks. So you watch like four or five of those. I mean, you're a, your festival director, so you see a bunch of these. Then all of a sudden, one comes on. And it's like, as the line is in the show, it's being slapped in the face like a drag queen. It's moving that fast. You're like, well, I, I don't know if it was funny, but I certainly remember it. Yeah, and yeah. Hook, <laughs> hooks you in is what you want, isn't it? A hook in. Yeah. Oh, so I was like, yeah. And when I released it last year, I was shocked. I will say this: it was a. When pandemic started, I hadn't planned on doing it as a web series, but I saw a couple of the first um, festivals, I'm not gonna mention their names. I saw what was accepted as TV or web series. And I was like, really? That, that, that is, what is accepted? This is what you consider one of the best series? And that got me, you know, for me, I'm an angry Buddhist. So that just, their rage drove me. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, Brazzy Jazz was just sitting on the shelf it's better than this. So that's when we released ah, it. Okay. And the first days, you know, I released, it was like automatic, it was, things were coming in. We, we accept, we want you in our fest. I was like, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. I could use a little good news in my life We're in the middle yes. of a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> and it did well. I mean, not, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but people like it, like it. People hate it, hate it. And that's what you want is an emotional reaction, not a, well, yeah, that was okay. Yeah, I, I mean, again, going, going back to kind of when it does come in, I mean, even looking behind you at the post that you've done so well at setting the tone and you know what you're getting yourself in for. And, you know, the poster summarizes it there yeah, perfectly. And it's like, that's half the thing we say. You've got to try and set the tone for whatever your show is as soon as you can. So you know what you're accepting. And yours, yeah, yours are just straight there, starting with the poster. And then it delivers when you watch it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. 
Yeah, um, yeah, so, that's, so was it? So um, did you finance it yourself then, making these first free twenty-two minutes? So it goes back to the DIY, doesn't it? So you got it done, and then you've got it sorted. Yeah. So. Well, I'd be honest, like I said from the beginning, I, I do work in a job during the day that does well, and my wife You've got that money to, to, yeah. You got to, you know, invest you in yourself. Decide for your, I, I'm not telling everyone to do it. I do. I've had projects that were just disasters that I put money in, and, you know, it's gone forever. That's the other side of real estate. Even if it's a bad project, you're still left with a building. It may not have been as successful. But I was involved with an off-Broadway play a year and a half ago. It was a really big budget and names, and we lost everything, and it uh, closed in one night. Yeah. And I remember, you know, that... You should have told Mel Brooks about that. Of, uh... Yeah, yeah it's, it's... At least with a web series, you... You know, you can do a lot of things now. I'm not even talking camera technology, but if you're creative, and you don't, also don't need to shoot every day in a row. You know, you don't need to shoot the whole series in five or six days. Shoot for a day or two. Yeah. See what you got. Okay, what's working, what's not working. That's the one thing independent filmmakers have. We don't have deadlines. The deadlines are the ones we impose on ourselves and yeah. it restricts us. If we say, hey, we're just going to do this, Okay, well, because the other thing is I, I, I've taught a little in my past. And the first thing I always tell people is the first lesson I learned in film school where I had like a, an asshole of a teacher that just got in our face and said, look, none of you are geniuses, even though Chris just told me I was a genius, that um, he goes, as writers know this, there's the film you write, there's the film you shoot, in the film you edit. If half of your script ends up in the final product, consider yourself lucky. Everyone's like, <laughs> I tell actors that when we're right about to shoot, I have my, my standard speeches of this is this, this is our dream, so let's not take ourselves too seriously, enjoy. But just remember, we're gonna, I'm, I like improv, but we just remember, we have to be able to still tell the story. So yeah. I'll let you yeah. play around. And what my actors theoretically like is I give everyone what I call the wild take. After I know I have the footage, I say, like, all right, you know this scene, do it however you would want to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, great. It's shocking, shocking how much of that footage ends up in the, makes me look like a genius in the end that ends up in there. A guy's like saying irrelevant lines. I'm like, you know what? We can, uh, in the editing room, yeah. like, this beautiful idiot is so perfect. You know, that line ends up in there. You're like, be like, God, where'd you come up with that line? Well, you know, after much thought and analysis, <laughs> I was meditating, and then this line just came to me. Meditate. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's perfectly true. And I often do that the same way, just say I call it the wild card as well. So anything you like now, and sometimes it's spontaneous, and that's why it works. Um you need a few just, seconds, you don't need the full let them go on for four minutes. If you can pull five seconds. Yeah. That ends up in five seconds of your four minute show. It's like that was, yeah, correct. People are laughing a lot of it's so irrelevant that it can't even even fit it into your show. Like you know, oh, <laughs> you didn't know I was a really not a woman. I'm I'm Tom. The you know, like, I don't know if that's gonna work. Right, hey, what else you got? <laughs> and where did you uh, where did you source your cast from, Steve? When you were putting when you finished the script, where did you get the guys from? Well, the lead actress who's there is Tatiana Meyer. We had done a, a teaser reel a few years before, when, and that's what we used to pitch to the networks here and in Brazil. Yeah, so yeah, I made a note of that teaser reel. So just before we quickly move on with that, then, so would you say that's important to people to try and put a teaser reel together to try and showcase their idea? or? Well, it really depends on what your goal is. My goal was to try and get a TV show done. So I had the Bible, I had, you know, the first two or three scripts written and, you know, but they still want to see the, the energy and the feel. And the first teaser we shot really, we tried to shoot a pilot. Hey, I'm admitting this, this is for everyone to know. We shot the 30 minute pilot. It was not good. It was one of the, the lead actress was phenomenal, but some of the other actors weren't because they weren't able to carry out scenes. By the end of the scene, their energy had so dropped. 
Yeah, yeah. But as a teaser reel, I cut a two minute teaser reel that was so energetic, and everyone's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So it worked. That's what that worked. worked. Yeah. That's what worked. Yeah. You can't tell. Well, look, it's gonna be like this or this. Or let me whip this out. This is what I got for you. Yeah, yeah. Two minutes is not hard. I mean, even a minute, minutes fine for comedy as long as it's an explosive minute. It shouldn't be even if you just shoot a teaser reel where you're like, all right, this boom, 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 boom. You shoot, you know, ten locations. Try not to shoot too many locations, but them saying this, 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 this. It's so it's the most valuable thing you can do, and because it also shows producers and people who make decisions that you get skin in the game. You believe in your project more than here's my script love me, make me a millionaire. Where are you, Netflix? I've been sitting here all day. I'm just wanting to drive away. And here, or watch this. Here's the script. Here's the Bible. Here is the, you know, couple of the actors, you know, styles at least that I like. If you don't like it, we can obviously change it down the road. But watch this. And they're like, whoa, okay. You, uh, and it can't be crap. It can't, even if it's shot on an iPhone, it can be done well. It can't yeah, just yeah. be guys sitting on a sofa going, yeah, let me tell you about this show I want to make. It's about, uh, you know, no, show some action, move yeah, it. Yeah. And Chris, you can speak this better than me. You're a selector for a, a festival director. You get thousands of things sent to you and you got to remember what sticks out to Chris, not but yeah. in a vacuum what, oh, if someone's going to sit down and watch this, I get, and I do this from actors submitting to me, and I give uh, classes to actors on how to audition for, for independent directors, like anyone cares. We, we don't pay, we barely pay you. But it's, you come in, and when you're sending me all of your reels, I don't want to see anything more than a minute. If I see it's yeah. like seven minutes, are you kidding me? I only want to see you. I don't want to see the other person in the scene. Just Correct. put together yeah. what I call the speed. It's six seconds of this thing you did, six seconds of this, boom, boom, boom laughing, crying, you know, running, jumping from a building. That's it. If I want to watch more, I'll watch more. But the same thing is you got to capture their intention. And the same thing with the auditions I tell them. You come in the room, that should be the best 10 minutes or five minutes of your day. Because after this, you're going back to the Starbucks or Walmart or wherever. Yeah. This, is your work this is your 10 minutes. And I always quote George Clooney goes, it wasn't until I started enjoying auditions that I started getting hired that not like, oh my God, the subway's late, I got here, I, you know, uh, whatever, I'll get through this. Like, really? This should be, even if I don't hire you for this role, I've hired people off of auditions because I have everything on tape. Like, I'll remember this guy for something else and I've done it. Now everyone's like, yeah, you got a few audition for him, just bring it because he, he may use you for something else. Correct, yeah, 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 yeah. So in terms of what your original question was, teaser reels, it's invaluable. You don't have to even speak. You're like, you want to see my project? Here it is. After it's done, mic drop, leave the room. Uh, if they want yeah, yeah. you, I'm chasing you after the elevator. Worth it. And obviously, being, going back to kind of casting there as well, being in New York, I guess, uh, finding people wanting to be involved probably isn't, uh, isn't really an issue, I guess, is it? There's, there must be lots of enthusiasm, I would guess. Finding people isn't hard. Finding the right people is hard. Well, going on that note, and obviously you lead Tatiana, <laughs> she goes back to that energy, doesn't it? And she has the energy in every episode, doesn't she? In every scene, she uh, just seems to have it in abundance, doesn't she? There. So, what, did you already know her? Or did that just was she auditioned, or what was the script there? The lead. She was referred by. Uh, we did the auditions in Brazil by video because I wasn't there, but my partner at the time. Uh, I mean, Paulo Tibau, he put together seven or eight people that were either upper comers or were doing the soap operas there. And Tatiana's background, she was the girl from Ipanema. She won that contest when she was young. And she's classic, as they call karaoke, someone from Rio. So the first time we shot, her energy was like 10 levels above that everyone else is on the set. And they kind of, you know, it was obvious once you're in the editing room like this, she's she's at a high octave and they're uh, in the base zone. <laughs> so on, when we were preparing to shoot this time, we called in for the two other act, lead actresses, uh, the one playing 
uh, Marty, which is Kelly Evans, and the one playing Dina, which is Alana Johnson, I called in 80 people. Wow. I, re I read with them all for the first round, each one with my assistant sitting next to me. I want to make sure I was dealing, and I told them I'm going to read the scene. It's a scene, not even in the show, it's an audition scene I used, uh, where we're going to do it one time this way, and then we're going to just, we're just going to improv. And I wanted to see what I'd be dealing with because I had the trust of my set. Some of them I would get in their face, I would completely change up. They would run out of the room crying. All right, maybe not a good selection. And these two, Kelly and Alana, got in my face like, you know, you know, it's like, I love this. And then there was the second round. So we then saw them together, see how they reacted together, the best four or five of each role. And then the final, there was a third round where it was just the final two of each role and put them in, the, in one of the actual scenes. And I have it on video of their Kelly and Alana, Dean and Marty scene that was exceptional. They went on for like 15 minutes. I just gave them a, an idea and they just improv the entire wow. scene that was <laughs> hilarious. And like, yeah, it was started with like a little scene for the show. And then they would just go on and on and on. And I said, all right, I have my people. And then at that point, They've done exceptionally well, as you know, you rewarded Kelly Evans yeah, yeah. for her role. She's she stood out, she did stand out in the thing as well. Yeah, but she's explosive. Yeah, it's different being the lead, but you know, we finally had people who are at the same energy level. And Alana is a stamp comedian. She she actually had a show that she wrote and produced that did pretty well for herself, uh, for BET. And she's still doing a lot of things. It just you get the best people. It's casting. It took a lot of the pressure off me. Then I could play. Then you're in the yeah. uh, Dr. Frankenstein, and it's we can play with the script because you know they're going to bring something. Perfect. Yeah. The guys, the guy roles, uh, you know, I, uh, were people I knew and trusted, and uh, they're quality guys. They're. It's funny that most of them are living in L.A. now. I, they're they're all they're all bigger than me now. They don't need me anymore. <laughs> Talking to you, Marco and Kadu, the two guys, you know, the guys who played the boyfriend and uh, Piccolo. Oh, perfect. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's strange, isn't it? It's stepping stones type of things, isn't it? And uh, yeah, it's not always the case, but it's nice when it happens, and it's nice when it happens to people you like as well, isn't it? So that's always uh, always good there. Um, can I ask then? Uh, I usually ask people what the budget was. So, how much roughly did it cost to produce um, these? For the 66 minutes, um, not counting marketing for the festivals that's been going on, going, I, the whole thing was 35,000. It, it's just strange because everyone, that's the beauty of web series as well. There's, um, there's no kind of, you know, the budget it could be the sky, couldn't it? Or it could be whatever's in your pocket. And it's like, some have been made on their phones and some people have had uh, you know sponsorship um, i've spoken to a few people we have sponsors yeah but it was at the time we had to do quality and i don't like to, well my kids my lucky things is working in real estate I had connections with a lot of locations so oh, great, shooting yeah. that, that loft scene is yes. was an expensive location i even got in a fraction of the cost was still not cheap Shooting wow. at a store for an entire day, buying out the day was not cheap. Uh, bars, but it was, we did the whole shoot in six days. So oh, we shot 66 yeah. minutes of usable footage. We had 11 hours of footage. Um, so wow. it was, and the other thing with comedy, we didn't have long days. It was 10 hour days. I, I can't, I'm old. The actors, you know, it's comedy. You know, like pushing in the fourteenth hour. Now, it'd really, be funny. I mean, I know you can barely stand up, but <laughs> what's the point? It's completely unusable footage. So if everyone knows yeah. how to pace yeah, themselves yeah. now, look, we're not going long. We're not even going twelve hours. We're going ten, ten and a half with lunch. Boom, let's do it. Just be keep moving. And the other thing is having a small crew. We only had a crew of five. You're able to shooting in apartments in New York, you cannot have a lot of people. And plus, if you want to move quickly, uh, 
it's easy. And it doesn't get in the actor's way because once we're set up, I just want them to go, all right, we screwed up, fine. Let's just go up, set it up again. It wasn't like, all right, let's completely reset the lighting. And then there's a lot of people in the way and you gotta feed everyone who, you know, there. The more people there, there's more of a chance of someone being really miserable. And there's yes. always this yeah. one miserable person. So if you can reduce it to one, you can deal with them. If it's yeah. they're not spreading like COVID, then you have to, uh, you have a problem. You're in trouble. <laughs> but I always believe in small crews. Even if I was given bigger budgets, why would I, you know, DP, sound, assistant camera. I don't even know if we're allowed hair and makeup anymore. And then uh, my assistant, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And get the job done, isn't it? Yeah. If I was actually had any ability to shoot things myself, I would be one less person, but I don't. So sorry, Sam Schmitz, I will not be taking your job. <laughs> dp fantastic and the other thing was the quality of it all looked absolutely fantastic as well wasn't it um what, what was it you shot on steve i believe this one was the sony f7 nice, um, nice. my other projects were the, the panasonic um but yeah the cameras are unbelievable these days you sport for choice yeah yeah, if you get a guy who really knows what they're doing, and my DP owns the cameras, he owns a small van of lights, you know, and he brings his own crew of gaffer and if days we needed a swing guy, that's it. I don't want to have to worry about that. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah. And he knows how I work, and, you know, he's a big guy, so he can do handheld a lot. Um, and he's not going to complain the camera's too heavy especially these cameras they're not heavy even if you build it out with everything else it's just uh, of course i'm not the one carrying the camera so i don't care at all <laughs> <laughs> you wimp what's wrong with you it's, you're doing, like uh, doing bicep. 40. <laughs> you see them doing bicep curls of the camera on the brakes yeah. you think yeah maybe it's <laughs> it's over there uh, terrific! That's great. So you did it in uh, you did it in six days. Uh, yeah, it's all budget, didn't you? Did you ever cross your mind when you got to the sixty six minutes to perhaps have a cut of it as a feature film or anything? Or was that, or was it always going to be episodic? Uh, always going to be in that format? You think? Just from I the figured, you know, when it, now they've seen it all edited because um, we have distribution now actually through uh, people in your country. <laughs> twisted, twisted mirror. No, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely people, yeah, yeah. So they came. They told me uh, we we want, we want our episodes to be like fifteen minutes. So can you do like four or fifty? And then when we cut it together with my editor, she's like, oh "My God, it looks so much better like this." I said, "I agree, but I think part of it's because we're tired of looking at it in the other format." So it was just cutting out the end titles and the beginning titles, put three episodes together, and it really went well together and so we yeah. did one with the whole like a 30 minute episode it's like it really because of the lessons we learned in the web formatting of it where we cut things out and we have all these pop-up graphics that was a guy named mj misery came up with tj misery excuse me was it changed things you, you were allowed to play with it rather than playing in normal television format which we shot and it was just very straight line this happens and this happens and this happens now you're allowed to just blast information on the screen very quickly this is marty boom 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 and god i was like god, it's i don't know how i can go back to regular filmmaking or television shooting again if i can't do that but i did just do a project was able to do it without that but it's by the way i have the same editor on all my projects and her name is gloria tello and she's gotten big too. She's just work, uh, working. I won't mention who an Oscar-winning director. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yesterday's news. I know, but isn't it great? They've got all these people kind of around you now, isn't it? And these, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, she's so talented. But that's the point: is once you're in the editing room, if you have someone and she comes up with ideas, and I let her play around, and she's, like, I'm like, why didn't I think of that? That's brilliant. What, what was I think? I shouldn't even have written it. You know, right. <laughs> I, I can't mean, even tell you how many scenes are on the uh, in my special digital folder here. Like, but what the hell were you thinking, folder? 
of completed scenes that were com don't even make it into the show. <laughs> well, I mean, and it goes back to what you were saying earlier on about editing, doesn't it? That's where the film's found, and you can you can experiment so much, and you can create a mood that wasn't there on the day, and you can do all sorts in editing. So, if yeah, you've got someone talented like your friend there, it's tremendous, isn't it? Yeah, when we shot that perverted painting party, we, it was like a 10, 15 minute scene. We had so much good footage, but it, it, it was too long. It was, so when we cut it down, finally, it was like six minutes. It's like, God, it really moves, it's quick. But, and you realize you don't even miss stuff you thought was funny. It is funny, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't move the story. It, dilutes. it also dilutes what is working well. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 very true. Yeah, which you can do there. Uh, terrific. So you're saying um, you're going to have your season two out uh, this year. You'll be, the other half, you're going to start distributing around festivals. That's great. Well, uh, we're not going to be doing too much more distribution. We have some that for season two that were invited back for the festivals, part of the Red Series World Cup and stuff like that. But not too much more because we're already being distributed as of actually only two weeks ago. Yeah. And so now it's just really just more for trying to further get the word out there. But I have a new series that's going around, I'll shamelessly plug, called Lower East Sides. I'll be submitting it to you, Chris, don't worry. I, uh, I could give you a funny story and my buddies at Rio Web Fest, you know, I'm the- Yeah, 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 lovely people, yeah. There. Yeah, they're great guys. Yeah, yeah. The Brazzy Jazz, yeah, I, know, I got like seven nominations that didn't win any. A Brazilian series shot in the US in the game. My, I've, my, I've had the same my, thing in the UK with my bridge series. I, <laughs> I, I, I won't even go there with you. I'm like, bastard. Uh, I'm sorry, Leonardo, uh, if you're yeah. watching. Uh, Leo's lovely, well, lovely. Yeah. So, and Daniel, can't forget Daniel. But my other series, Low Resides, which I gave them the world premiere, won as best musical series. And, you know, I got to speak via phone live at the, uh, uh -huh. the website and in Portuguese to, uh, you know, to the crowd there. Uh -huh. um, I had, uh, I had someone, you know, we both know in common, uh, accepted for me, uh, Sergio Khalili, who does, uh, yeah. Boris Lee. So he was up yes, there. Yeah, yeah, me. yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, you can't, again, one plus one equal Thursday. The Brazilian series in Brazil uh, about a Brazilian girl in New York. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they, they one of our rock and roll bands on the Lower East Side uh, trying to make it. And they were that one. So, and it's not about being better or whatever. It's it's all, as you know, it's subjective. I, I could yes. scream at you, why yeah. didn't I? My Chris, why didn't I win Best Comedy? Seriously. No, but uh, exactly. It's whatever. There's other good stuff out there. That I've, and that's what I've loved about this whole circuit, yeah, yeah. especially the uh, remote. I watch every comedy web series when I'm in these festivals. I'm like, well. Oh, yeah, oh, do you actually? Like, that's a good question, actually. Do you actually watch everything that's in the thing and in the league? And yeah. Well, in my category. Great, right, great. Right. Like but isn't that good now? Horror, thriller. Even though I, because I've been in so many festivals with them, uh, Red Velvet the Revolution and Square Root, those guys blow my mind. I can't even imagine this. I like, mine's like a piddly little comedy thing. They're creating whole new worlds and editing techniques. And I'm like, wow. So it ups your game when you see something great. Yeah, yeah honestly acknowledge is better and that's the whole point even i know i'm not saying well like, geez i i was like i'm embarrassed even being in the same festival with these people they're so much better than me but no, but that's the point you shouldn't be that way you shouldn't be like i'm god's gift to uh yes, yeah 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 other yeah. stuff i'm looking at like all right well <laughs> i assume they're young and it's their first project um and i've been doing it 40 years what <laughs> yeah. well then we got a problem <laughs> But yeah, you gotta learn. I mean, <laughs> then we got a problem. Watch Netflix series to see what's working. You know, there's some of the yeah. cutting edge stuff. I mean, necessity yeah. is the mother of invention. You see some of these web series. Like I said, I'll call out the uh, Muni and 
or uh, Red Velvet or Illusion. I'm like, Jesus. And she told me her budget. I'm like, oh my God, I feel embarrassed how much I spent compared to you. you you've created this whole weird world in, in London. And I'm like, you know, people dancing around at little parties here in New York. Yeah. Yeah, everything's different now, isn't it? I know that, but you got to at least respect. That's what I'm saying. I will watch stuff. I'm like, wow. When people say, you got to watch this, it's really good. Another guy I'll call out, Trip Hope. I know uh, Steampunk and all that other stuff. These guys, I, and of course, the one you celebrated, Luke Eve of uh, Cancel. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That show blew me away. And I've gotten to know Luke a little bit. Hey, Luke, sorry. Um, I was like, Jesus, again. I was like, that's nuanced. And they shot on two iPhones in their apartment, just him, his I guess still fiance and uh, his mother. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And they created a whole series. Poignant, funny, harsh, you know, all these things. Well, yeah. In, and, in the situation, in the situation. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. He's like, where's my cat? Where's my cell phone? Right, we're going to put it on a, a little tripod here. And the other one, the second cell phone we're going to use to record sound. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, they're like rubbing sticks together. I'm playing with a lightsaber here. I should at least be able to. Uh... Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And again, it, it just that one in particular. I mean, I, you know, I said in that end speech about that uh, series, and it was true. It was just lightning in a kind of bottle in the area. And But he had the ability. He had done other stuff. Yeah. And he yeah, takes yeah. his craft, and it takes a person who is a craftsman, I don't like to throw that word around, who understood, I have the story here. I have the technology, minimum technology necessary to tell the story. Correct. Yeah. Port is the story. And I was like, God. So that is, so yeah. that's been the best thing for me in festivals. And like I said, I've gotten to know a lot of these people like Sergio and Luke and uh, never talked directly or seen, obviously seen any of these people live. It will probably be weird. Like, oh, I thought you'd be taller. Um, yeah, it would not be <laughs> something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You were a lot cooler on uh, WhatsApp and uh, Zoom. I don't know. Yeah. We have to rethink this relationship here. What a, what a letdown. What a letdown. I expected a mountain of a man, and uh, this isn't really what I expected. <laughs> you sound like my last date. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, not like you, my wife, man, on a daily basis, yes. Uh, so, yes, yeah. Uh, so, so, just on the festival run, was there. Uh, any amazing festival experiences you had on the other side of the pond at all? Of course, British Web Fest was that was so cool. <laughs> Wait, tell me when you got the check. Can I put that? Yeah, the check. <laughs> I got a check. I got an award. I don't remember the check. Is that separate? <laughs> Is that sitting in my Zoom account or it's uh, tax deductible? It's okay. It's, it's a write off. <laughs> no, I mean I love it was. This is your first year, right? Yeah, yeah. And I like the variety variety of categories. As I said, a lot of festivals, it's, again, trying to lump things, okay, it's either drama, a comedy, a thriller, and you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. but to see that you brought a lot of people into the, under the tent, and um, one of the, the, series I did get to know, I think is a band formerly known as through your web mm. series, I mean, for your festival. And yeah, you know, I was like, hey, because my show that I'm releasing now is um, is a rock and roll thing. So I was like, hey, well, here we go. Just a little blatant. Uh... Lower East. Lower East. Oh, uh, I should have guessed that. I should have. Yes, there you go. And uh, like it was so anything that's uh music related i always want to check out and i was like wow they got wow. you you know writing music people remember they want to see why songs are created so that's the check. yeah and they had a simple format didn't they as well i think the one you're referencing there yeah so know. talking about budgets i'm uh, comparing budgets they like all right camera couch three girls guitar yeah and it just, there was something there. And again, you, yeah, you just, you look at kind of what's catchy, I guess, isn't it? And that's, yeah, that's the beauty. Yeah. When you when you judge these things, I've said this before, it's like you have access to a brand new independent TV channel 
and you're getting all these different concerts. So it's lovely being a filmmaker and watching it. It's great. But you're a filter, but you're not a, an overwhelming filter like you know stuff that gets on Netflix or if you have to, God forbid, try and find something on Amazon because yeah. they take such a volume of stuff. And I always try to explain it to people trying to get my own things out there. I said, when you sit down to watch something on Amazon, what prompts you to want to watch, you know, watch something? Someone's told you about it, most likely. If yeah, you're not, yeah. if, right, you can't search lists anymore. You can't have the Netflix emails coming to you. Like, Here are the 14 series coming out this week and 12 movies. We thought you'd like these. Yeah, really? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm still, I have a list of 100. I'm, a list, I'm like four. You know, I have uh, so many things to go through that if Chris doesn't say, man, you got to check out this show, it's unbelievable. That's how I found out about Peep Show. It's how, you know, years ago, how I found out about a lot of things, the hidden gems, because they're not going to publicize you, um, especially in, in, instead of their own content. Yeah, but yeah. That, yeah, everyone goes, well, I'm on Amazon. I'm like, okay, you you search it, you find it, and you add it to the list. But, you know, it's not going to be called out to you. Even if you search, like, web series or comedies. Uh, I know another comedy series that's doing very well that it is on Amazon uh, called What's Out that? to Them, Avocado Toast. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They uh, did very well. I mean, that was, to get picked up by Amazon is big, but... You gotta understand what is your if your goal is the minimum I'm gonna learn from this experience, my next project's gonna be better, then you're not gonna fail. It's gonna be, well, this is the project I'm gonna make, and I'm gonna be so famous after this. You know, Netflix is gonna see this on my obscure YouTube channel and say, Where how did we not know about this guy earlier? What the hell is going on? Who's in marketing? Who's in the finding new talent? Get that guy in here. Oh, because they have access, to, they're paying hundreds of millions of dollars to Shondaland and uh, Ryan Murphy. They don't need it, uh, a little old Steve Becker or Chris, sorry. You, you, you never know. You never know, isn't it? You yeah. Get, you get some momentum or you're just in the right place at the right time and you're chatting to somebody and yeah, they're after something different. You say, look at this Brazilian in New York series I've got. And you know, you, like you say, you've got it there ready. Well, yeah. at least if you make something, you're up the next rung in the line. Correct, yeah. And you make a second thing, you're up another rung. And, you know, you keep climbing. If maybe the ladder is going endless, but at least you're up the ladder. No, yeah, and you're doing what you want to do, which is great. And yeah, um, yeah, that, that's not something to diminish. I just want to say, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, is it should be pleasurable. And that's a, yeah. I have this little note of things I say to myself before I start a project, like, this is your dream. You enjoy this. What? Don't worry about all the things that can go wrong because you, as a writer, director, producer, whatever you're on your project, you're like, oh my God, the pressure is so intense. I got to get this done, this done. You just take a step back. And I do that like for five minutes before shooting every day. Just chill out. I mean, it is the aggressive Buddhist side of me. I the calm side, like, all right. No, I think that this isn't life or death. Let's just do the best we can. That's absolutely uh, lovely and so true, isn't it? Before you get started, this is what you want to be doing. And you get tied up in the stress sometime. It's like, no, just take a minute and go, this is actually really, really good. You're in a privileged position to be able to do this. Well, but yeah. you know, especially since you're the one doing everything, you're probably so exhausted <laughs> yeah, from pre-production right. and getting the actors and making sure everyone's cat and everyone's going to show up on time the next day. So you come to set just knackered, we use the British <laughs> vernacular. Yeah, it's right. And everyone else is like excited. You're like, oh God, all right, let's, all right. Let's go, oh. let's go. Uh, what, what are we doing first? I don't even remember what we're shooting. Yeah. But is everyone here? <laughs> so so just remember, yeah, you're the most important person there. You know, no one's going to do anything without you, but you should be enjoying it. It shouldn't be the one like, God, she sucks as an actress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's ruining my dream. <laughs> all this, all this, and now what do I have? Now uh, what do I have? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Uh, just on those on these new projects, uh, just before we go on to your new one there, um, any plans for a season three of Razzy Jazzy? 
Is yes, this, I'm actually is, prepping it. Um, is this where she meets an Englishman with gray hair? Is that where it all kicks yeah, off? Well, that's, that? that's what she already did. So she, this is going to be so, sort of a, a different bent. Is oh, okay. Razzy Dazzy is going to be sort of like an anthology series now. Uh, we have a different characters. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of the, still the Brazilian experience in New York, but from a different point of view. And what a good idea. Yeah. Add a couple of guys in, so we're not calling it Brazzy Boys. It'll still be Brazzy Jazzy, and, uh, <laughs> but there'll be a more of a balance between men and women. And you know, shameless plug: my wife's uh, business, who is the theoretical sponsor of Brazzy Jazzy Spa Zuzu, she does Brazilian uh, skincare and gets rid of cellulite and all this other stuff well if you give us any links we can put them on the screen for that so we can yeah i'll see any links um but all of her clients are like these famous victoria's secret models and i can don't divulge their names but if you follow her on uh, instagram you'll see some very interesting famous people there and they're all one bit i want to be in the next episodes of uh, the show i want to be uh, uh Look, I'm not compared to your modeling contract here. You do realize if you're in, I may pay you something. No, 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 I'll just be in. And so we're going to incorporate her spa into it. And I get to sort of a meeting spot for a lot of Brazilian, which it truly is, you know, famous Brazilian models and even some actors and even some non Brazilians. Terrific. Yeah. yeah I, I would tell anyone who's watching this, the thousands and tens of thousands of people watching, Check out at Spa Zuzu and you will see some very interesting faces on there. Yeah, yeah. Put the give us the link. We'll put that on the screen and yeah. Put sure. away on that one. Yeah. Terrific. Okay. okay. And what was your, your new series about Lower East Side? What's what's the what's the pitch for that? This is about uh, uh, I don't even remember my own log lines anymore. It's a scrappy <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a scrappy producer and jaded club manager lead an eclectic group of rock and roll wannabes on the problematic road to stardom. And it, the, the, uh, the comps are shameless and sort of rent. So it's all original music. It's four bands. Uh, it's... Uh, you know, not to talk down my other series, I think it's by far the best thing I've done so far. But well, like you said, it's always about, you yeah. say it's about advancing, isn't it? So there's absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so we have 20 actors in this one in the, in the first hour. Um, they're all performers, they're all actors and musicians and singers. Okay. It's all original music, it's a lot, it's energy the same level of energy as brazzy jazzy if you can believe that because this rock Perfect. and roll yeah, yeah. and it's rock and roll it's techno it's a bunch of things um so yeah we just launched the official marking a month ago but i said i gave the sneak peek to our boy sorry it wasn't british web fest uh oh, real web fest. leo and daniel uh and um yeah i was like surprised by my wife's like, how did you lose with uh, Brazzy Jazzy in Brazil? I'm embarrassed. I said, well, I'm sorry. This is what I did wrong. These are the five things I obviously did wrong for not to win and give you more glory. But uh, there it is uh, for... Uh, oh, yeah. Terrific. Yeah, for... Uh, nice. For Rio. But um, she goes, I guess it's all right if the other series won, but, you know, the one about is inspired theoretically by her life she can't understand anytime it doesn't win and i'm like well let me explain there are other series out there it's subjective and some people just don't like your story what can i tell you yeah. well yeah i mean that's the thing yeah you can't yeah just it's the way it goes i guess isn't it? And, yeah. but it certainly wasn't the writing or the directing or the producing it was you know the inspiration and you know the actors and the, you know, the crew it was certainly not my fault well, we liked it anyway. Damn it. I know. It's, 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 you don't want to get competitive. I, and like I said, I have been so grateful of all the people I've met who are of similar ilk. And that's the best thing about the festivals. Yes. You're not meeting, you're meeting people who are also out there making stuff and have the same mindset of, yeah, this is, I'm making this. 
I just gotta scrape together money to make the next season. Correct. And I already got this other project, and uh, and I'm working with a couple of them. I I'm great, like, great, yeah. Go to help. I absolutely want to be part of you. I want to look. I think your show is great, and I you know, want to be part of it. I want to see what you're doing remotely, of course. And and you build up a little community, don't you? And that's that's important. And I I would say the web community is a thousand percent much nicer and welcoming than the film community. I would say oh, definitely. Yes. You know, yes. I, uh, like I'm the same. It's a very closed door level of humanity. Right. It's yeah, we're uh, <laughs> web people are so looked down on it. It's pathetic because you know they, even now they say web content, they, they mean what like Netflix? No, no, I'm not talking Netflix. I'm talking. We're on YouTube. We're on Vimeo. We're on these other. And they're things. like, they're like. <laughs> oh, that cute little thing you're doing. Oh, it's not a. You know, they can do uh, blogging and the you know, the uh, podcast. They can understand because you know that's just. Yeah, yeah but it's a lot of a lot more. It's a bit snobbery, really, isn't it? And that's uh, not a. Nice... Yeah, but I think the pandemic has taken a lot of this snobbery. It's amazing how much the actors have changed in their approach to me now. Of like, I want this. I want this. I want after the pandemic. Hey, Stephen, sir, is there anything I uh, <laughs> I can help you with? Is there uh, is there any way possible in your infinite wisdom and kindness if you could help me with the uh, so yeah, like, yeah. I helped you. I work for you. I'm the talent. I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying this because I know you're an actor. So. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll tell you, it's a, yeah, stranger. And I, you know, I love acting, isn't it? But I know some actors that I, I certainly don't love. You know, <laughs> I happen to work with some lovely people, which is great. But um, I've been on some sets and. You know, I, uh, yeah, I, that's why I love the show. I'm a big Ricky Gervais fan. I know a lot of people he rubs the wrong way, but I think <laughs> Extras was probably one of the greatest. It. Yeah. it was so raw and honest. I mean, and also the original Office. Yes. The, yeah, the yeah. American yeah. version of the Office, like really embarrassingly lame. But, uh, and I love his new show. Um, Afterlife. Yeah. Again, dark, dark. I can go very there. Very dark, very dark. But watching extras and just seeing how he was treated and just the behind the scenes stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was, yeah. I was like, well, this isn't really that imaginative because this is what happens. It's uh, every actress coming up to you, your background actor. Can I get a line? You know, uh, can I just say something? Can I, can I be one of the prime right in the behind them shooting? I said, no, because when you were doing it, you kept looking at the camera and uh, making faces. Go stand over there. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I, I think brings us up to date. I think you've hipped, I can't remember, I think it was Fan Ladies, may have been my longest interview. And I think we have now beaten up by three minutes, I think. So high five. There you go. Uh, okay. um, sorry, ladies. You know, it's <laughs> There's still queens um, in my book. <laughs> but yeah, that's been absolutely, I've, I've really, really, really enjoyed chatting to you and uh, just listening to your experiences. And there's a lot of things there I've, I've related to very, very much. And Well, I think as we also both get older, it's a little different experience as, you know, 29 plus, which we both are as, as opposed to early 20s. And even the stories you can tell, I mean, yeah you know there's nuance even in comedy that it's not i used to write just ha ha comedies before it's just you know joke 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 now it has to be more of a story and it has to be you know not all things happening it's it's you know, real life now it's not yes. uh, yeah, yeah 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 you put a lot more of you you can put yourself in it sometimes kind of your emotions and things i guess can't you you know yeah, because that's what connects. I mean, and that's it's interesting. That's going from the next level of small, even uh, videos or web series, even small web series on YouTube to take the next step up to making a more complex web series. And I, I always talk back about the, what set the whole movement going in the United States was that show, uh, 
Broad City. Now they were doing episodes for four years. I don't know if you ever watched it. And, and Amy Poehler came on and she helped them along and then they got picked up by, I won't mention what network. And then they spent a year trying to write a pilot, but they'd only really, and sorry for it, Alana in, uh, I'm sorry, Peter, whoever's watching from Broad City, I love you, you guys are geniuses. But to go from writing four minute episodes to writing a 22 minute episode to a full arc and extending it out over a full season, takes a t it's a different skill, it's a different muscle you have to use. So they did that, and after a year, the original place they were with didn't want it, and they went to Comedy Central, and the rest is history. They were there yeah. for five very productive years. But it's still, even though they got picked up and it was everyone was rooting for them this, they had to then take it to a different level of, all right, we've written four-minute episodes. we got to write a 22-minute continuous episode of, and we're not making it up as we go along. And their pilot is brilliant, but it took them a long time yeah. to get it's approved. Skill set. I'm sure they're like me. They're like, what? the first one was good enough. And, you know, but being pushed and being criticized, being, you know, this isn't good enough, worked and they create came up with something genius and now they're set for life. No, there you go. Then it's a it's it's usually a zigzag, it's never a straight line, is it? Well, yeah. you hope it's a zigzag and not a circle. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. At least going in the right direction. Yeah, I'm. I'm like fucking Big Ben there in the background with the circle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, or like you're driving in a car. Didn't we pass this like three other times? We're not going in the right direction. But yeah. Houses of Parliament again. Yes. If you're going in the right direction and it's not good, it's going to be a bumpy road. It's going to be a zigzag. At least you're going in the right direction. You Correct. will get there. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Not a straight line. But if you're going, you know, take a wrong right turn and you're headed to uh, you know, Bristol, you know, you're you're going the wrong way. That's it. And if you're never going to get there, at least enjoy the journey, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. enjoy the ride because rides. You are a little fun. Buddhist. You're going a little Buddhist on me. Well, you know, I have an audio book on it too. <laughs> you listen to it before you go to sleep at night. Yeah, the Dalai Lama just who said that? Why, 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 where did that come from? Why, why did I say that? Perfect. All right, Steve. Well, hopefully, we're looking forward to seeing your new work when you submit that. Yeah. And, uh, ja Brazzy Jazzy Free with the Englishman arriving, of course. Yeah, we need to work on that. One of my best friends in Brazil is British. And, of course. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, he, well, he's lived in Brazil since he was one, but he went to school, college in, in England. And I always like, I'm going to put you in. He goes, I'm not an actor. I said, I don't need not you, your character. I will have someone far better looking and, and more talented than you. Cool. So there you here go. We are, here we are. <laughs> Airfare is not included, by the way. Uh, we're, we're working around a holiday. Uh, we're working around a holiday, exactly. When I'm not going to be here. What holiday <laughs> are we talking about? Christmas? No. Not shooting in winter. This is a warm weather series. Well, I mean, I've come from a summer holidays and we're just trying to... All right, I'll take you up on it. But Chris, I really appreciate it too. And I, like I said, I like meeting like-minded people. Anything I can ever do for you, let me know. Absolutely, yeah. Same vice versa. So let's start to uh, build this community up, isn't it? And just, you know, we're, we're all just a, a, a message away, aren't we, really? And it's like, you know, we can ever help. And it's like, you know, if you're here, we can ever help. If I'm in New York, ever help. And it's like, yeah. Terrific. Yeah, that, I will close on this one thing. My wife is still very upset that we, she's got all excited. We got into these festivals in London and, you know, Barcelona and yeah. Seoul. And, and when I told her we weren't going to them, she's like, what are you talking about? What's the point? I'm sorry. Uh, there's a pandemic. Let me read you in English that we're banned from going to Europe. <laughs> Just Sicily was sending us, hey, come on out. And she's like, I always wanted to go to Sicily. Well, you know, September yeah. is, it's really, I am, I'm sure it is nice. The videos they're sending us make it look really nice. We're not allowed to go. It's, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like, yeah, yeah. Also, I, I mean, honestly, to all the beautiful festivals that have accepted, I don't think we were going to spend 
you look good at every festival. As, it's it's, you know, it's money as long. well, isn't it? It's long, yeah. As part of a, other things we would do, yeah, I would build around it, but I wouldn't go <laughs> for two days. I kept explaining that to him. Yeah, because often oh. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but that's also the great thing about being virtual. It goes on a little longer. You can watch the stuff longer. And yeah, yeah. like I said, the hybrid festivals that you guys are working on, I think is a genius idea. Of, I mean, in person, and then there's stuff you can do virtual. I mean, this is another reason I, I decided to try and do this, you know, was to try and, you know, touch base with people, you know, I mean, I'm just trying catch up and it would be lovely if there was a way of people streaming themselves watching the British Web Awards or you know just a way of being I don't know how but that would be lovely to see people at home uh, you know watching it especially if they lose and they go shit and you think oh shit. and if they win yeah. they go yes yeah uh, that would be it I mean just like the Oscars get that camera right you know up close in their face oh, you Chris, yeah. delete, unfollow. He's a, he's a, he's it's, no longer. It's Chris still talking? Is he still going? <laughs> yeah, look at him up there telling jokes. We lost. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. <laughs> well, he, he tried anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, are you doing any writing or creating yourself now, or is it? Uh, um, we were in the middle of doing a um, uh, like a feature film type thing, and uh, that's where kind of all the time was spent and that got shut down due to COVID. So, but then during uh, COVID and that, a friend of mine, because I did a dating comedy, a friend of mine, a writing friend in London said, oh, I've been thinking about your show, Chris. Why don't you do it on Zoom? Have a new series where the same character goes on Zoom dates. And um, I just put an advert out for actresses and I thought, I'll see if there's any interest that way. And there was, and then I was looking at the actresses and writing like two minute episodes and then auditioning. And uh, that's gone on to do pretty well. And the turnover time's great. They're like just two, three minutes long. And we're on a third season this year of that. So yeah, it's just been- Well, Zoom, you gotta be big. You have to come through the, the lens. I mean, I know as an actor, you're you're very reserved because you're British and it's all, it's all internal. Be have to be but through zoom you gotta explode through and uh you gotta be you know that's why the south americans and the uh the italians are oh they can they get the hand they're all over the place they need the big zoom screen yeah yeah the british are trying to do it in internal yes yes i know uh, i'm not even gonna try the accent so uh, uh, this, yes we haven't all gone to rada but you know i know what you mean it's like yeah yes, yeah so. the difference so, but I learned I, my lines and turn up. I'm not going to be one of your Zoom dates, but uh, you know, anything else I can do to help? Sure, let me know. Yeah, well, I mean, I, just yeah, if you just watch it and tell me what you think, you know, I mean, it's nice to it's always nice to get different perspectives and um, and people have come to me with saying, oh, I've got an idea for one, and you've got, you've got some pretty good ideas. So you might watch when I think, oh, I you might know an actress you think she would be really funny in this type of date and. You can then, it's just fun to do it. I've had people collaborate and write different episodes because they're that easy to produce, really. They're, they're fun to do. So, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Look, it leads to something else. You know, it just, you learn from everything, you know nothing. That's all I've ever been told in, the, in film school. You know nothing because they're all very angry, unsuccessful filmmakers who are teaching at film school. So they're probably, <laughs> you know absolutely nothing. Wait till you get out there and fail miserably. There was a, there was a film I saw where they said um, a father was saying to his son, there's, there's no problems with having dreams. We should all have dreams. That way when you fail, at least you can say you tried. And you think, well, that's not a good speech, is it? <laughs> It's an awesome speech. What are you talking about? That's going to motivate me for the rest of the day. I know you're coming up on dinner time in the, in maybe a pub, but I, you know, this is lunch for me. Oh well, yeah, in Britain that's probably pub time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Stu. Thank you very much, my friend. Let's stay in touch and uh, good luck with the two shows. And we can help get in touch, and we'll hopefully see you again this year at the British Rebel Awards. That's right. I'll submit it to you right now. All right, Take care. Well. Cheers, Dad.